All right. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to balance chemical equations algebraically rather than, the, than by the guess and check method. The first step you're going to want to do is write out the atomic symbols for each element. So we got C, we got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Second step, write a variable on top of each term, and by term I mean molecule. So for C8H18, we're going to write A. For O2, we're going to write B. For CO2, C. And for H2O, D. Now, the reaction arrow will have an equal sign on top of it. You're going to see why in just a moment. Off to the side, write A, the variables again, A, B, C, and D. Okay, now we're going to find out how many moles of each element we have per term. So, we have 8 moles of carbon for A, so 8A. On the reactant side, we don't have any more carbon. So we go over the reaction arrow, and that means equals. And we go over to the products, and we see that carbon only has one, one uh, mole in the C term. So 8A equals C. I'm not going to write the one. Uh, for, for hydrogen, we have 18 moles in A. No more on the reactant side, so go over to the... So go over the reaction arrow, so equals, and we only have two moles in D. For oxygen, we have two moles in B equals two moles in C plus one mole in D. So just, why did I do the plus sign? Because it's right here. And we actually add everything on the reactant side if we go over the reaction arrow, then we write an equal sign, and then we add everything on the product side. Just separately. Just remember, it's a simple algebra. Okay, now the next step, we're going to assign a variable. I mean, we're going to assign a, 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 a number to a variable. So we're, you're going to want to choose, we're going to assign number one to a variable. You're going to want to choose the easiest variable to solve for. So if I see that C right here is alone, I'm going to want to uh, substitute A to be 1 rather than C because I don't want a fraction. It's easier to deal with whole numbers and integers. So I'm going to choose A to be 1. If I choose A to be 1, then we substitute an A. So 8 times A, which would be 1 right here, would be 8 times 1 equals C. So if 8 times 1 is 8, then that means C equals 8. Okay. For hydrogen, we already have A2, so we can solve for D. So 18 times, a, times 1 equals 2D. Remember, we want the D to be alone. That's our unknown. That's our variable. So we have 2D equals 18. We just divide by 2 divide by 2 and eliminate the 2's over there. So 18 divided by 2 equals 9. So D equals 9. Now for oxygen. The oxygen is the only one with a B, with a B variable. So remember we need to look for B and we have C which equals 8 and D which equals 9. So let's just substitute for that. So 2b, remember that's our variable, equals 2 times 8, because that's what we got right here, plus 9, which would be d, plus 9. So 2b equals 16 plus 9. Now 16 plus 9 equals 25. Remember we want that b to be alone, so we divide by 2 divide by 2, and then we have B equals 25 over 2. So we, we're going to put that there, and remember, we don't want fractions. So how do we eliminate fractions? We just multiply by the denominator. So if we multiply 25 times 2, we get 25. Since we did that for B, we have to apply that same multiplication to every other variable. So if we multiplied by 2, 
we're going to have to multiply a times 2. I mean, yeah, the a variable, 1 times 2 equals 2. Again, times 2 and times 2. So for c, 8 times 2 equals 16. And for d, 9 times 2 equals 18. So we want to write it all down to be neatly, uh, to look neat. So a equals 2, b equals 25, and c equals 16, and, and d equals 18. So those are our coefficients. Now we're just going to substitute them all the way here, 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 and there. Okay, so if the a term we got 2, we're going to put 2 right here, b is 25, c is 16, and d equals 18. Now if you do the guess and check method, you're going to see that everything is completely balanced. So we do a tiny little guess and check method right here, c8, ch, oh, there we go. No square that off okay so let's do the guess and check method so now we have uh, now we have on the reactant side 16 carbons let's go over to the product side 16 carbon yes that's balanced for hydrogen we have 18 times 2 so that's 16 2 3 36 so 36 and then we have 18 times 2 again, so 36 hydrogen. That's balance 2. Check. So for oxygen, we have 50 oxygens times 16 times 2. So 16 times 2, 12, 2, 3, 32. So 32 plus 18. So 32 plus 18 be 10, 4, 5. So 50. That's 50. So yes, everything is balanced. So you, you see in the algebraic method, we, w we went really fast. And then you can just do the guess and check and see if, it, if it's actually balanced. Okay, so going over to the next problem, we're going to start out the same as we did before. We're going to write out the atomic symbol for each element. So we got hydrogen, chlorine, calcium, carbon, and oxygen. Second step, assign a variable to each term. So HCl has A, CaCO3 has B, CaCl2 has C, H2O has D, and CO2 has E. Next step, write those variables off to the side, A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, next step, let's write out the moles for each, for each element in each term. Remember, if it doesn't have a number in the subscript area, it's going to be 1. So, hydrogen has only one mole in the reactant side in A equals, remember the reaction arrow means an equal sign, so hydrogen 1A equals 2D. Chlorine A equals, no more on the, on the reactant side, let's go over the reaction arrow to the product side, so 2C. For calcium B equals C. For carbon B equals E. For oxygen, 3B equals, we have D plus, remember, we can't forget that plus sign, it's different terms, D plus 2E, so you got 2E. Okay, now for the next step, assign a variable, uh, I mean assign one of the variables the number 1. So. If I choose, if you look at the variables on the left-hand side, it's easier to choose B to B1 rather than A because then we would have a fraction. So let's choose B to B1. If we have B to B1 to B1, yeah, 
we see that here and here for calcium and carbon we already get C and we get E so C equals 1 because B equaled 1 and then E equals 1 because B equaled 1 okay remember I just substituted haven't done anything new okay so now we have A and D we have to look for so if we get the oxygen reaction right here or oh, the equation I mean and we substitute we will get D so if, if we substitute for everything we will get everything but D perfect so 3 times 1 equals D plus 2 and E was 1 so 1 okay so we got 3 equals D plus 2 now remember it's a plus sign so we're just gonna subtract to get that 2 over to the other side so D equals 1 also okay D equals 1 also so if D equals 1 then we go to A equals because it's the only one we haven't found and we substitute for D so A equals 2 substitute substitute for the D and that means 2 times 1 so A equals 2. Now those are our coefficients right here 2, 1, 1, 1, 1. Let's do the guess and check method now and prove that we have let me erase this first alright so let's do the guess and check method and prove that we have a balanced equation you don't really need to do this but I'm doing it just to show you that by the algebraic method we can get there much faster okay so let's see H C L C A C and O I mean square this off again so we don't confuse it with anything else so we got I mean, oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so we got two hydrogens on the reactant side with two hydrogens on the product side. That's a check. We have that balanced. For chlorine, we have two chlorines on the reactant side and two chlorines on the product side. Check. For calcium, one calcium and one calcium. Check. For carbon, one carbon and the one carbon. Check. For oxygen, three oxygens and then we have on the product side one oxygen plus two oxygen equals three oxygen so check and you've seen again that by the algebraic method we did the guess and check much faster alright so I'm going to I'm going to show you one last one last reaction which I see that's been given people a lot of problems and it's the copper plus HNO3 and then go over to the reaction arrow copper again and then NO3 2 plus NO plus H2O now why can't you do the algebraic method with this at least I haven't been able to get it but that's because this is a redox reaction that's why I said the algebraic method mo works for most of the of the reactions but this redox reaction since it since it evolves spectator ions we can't do it uh, on the regular algebraic method you can do the guess and check but you are gonna take quite a long time and I don't know if you're gonna be able to actually get it however if we use the redox reaction method and the spectator ions we're gonna be able to get it right away uh, that explanation, as I said in this video, as I, as I wrote down in this video, it's going to be in another video because it's going to take us a little bit of time so that we can see what we're doing.